So general physics one, we start with kinematics. And basically, this is looking at motion without caring where that motion comes from. We know that Joey, the kangaroo, traveled at three meters per second for three seconds, and we know he ended up going nine meters. We don't, we don't know how Joey managed the kangaroo did it, but we know that that's how he did it. You know, that we can we can make those time estimates. But things that we want to think about in order to understand that is that we need to give ourselves a coordinate system. And we typically are going to use two different tool coordinate systems. Both are Cartesian coordinate systems in the sense that this is my X axis and this is my Y axis. And the other coordinate system that we might use, and I'm going to draw a vector here, is we might use this as an R and looking at an angle, and that's what we call our polar coordinate system. And we've done this before. So if I'm describing a point here in space, we know that I can describe it by its position in the X and its position in the Y in our coordinate system. And if I'm over here in my polar coordinate system, I can describe it as an R at an angle. So we can do that. Well, we can also go back and forth between these systems. And that's how we do that is by looking at what we call trigonometry. All right, so here's my R and I'm gonna actually use different colors here. So I'm gonna use green to represent X and I'm gonna use red to represent Y. And we've got our angle here. Okay. So we can go back and forth between these by using sine of our angle and cosine of our angle. Because what happens here is we know from the good old Pythagorean's theorem that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's our good old Pythagorean theorem. And we can use these functions to get us our coordinate system. Turns out that x is going to equal R. I'm going to go ahead and do cosine theta. Or we can say that cosine is equal to X divided by R. It's a ratio. My sine is going to equal Y divided by R. Or I can have y is equal to r sine theta. Because what we're going to understand and learn is that motion is independent in my x and my y directions. Our book will give us our x and our y's, but I like to also do it this way because we can turn our triangle around all, of, all over the place, and I can call that the hypotenuse. I can call this the opposite, and I can call this the adjacent. And as we start moving our triangle around to solve certain problems, sometimes it's easier to remember adjacent, hypotenuse, and opposite in order to work with my R cosine and my R sine theta. Because what we're going to do is we're going to call this thing something that some people have never called before. We're going to call this a vector. 
and vectors have direction and magnitude. This tells us the way it points. This tells us how long it is. So my direction is gonna come from this angle. My magnitude tells me how long it is. So this is a vector and we're gonna start looking at the vectors and things that we know about it, I already did. We can add vectors. We can subtract vectors. And by looking at this, we can break this up because I know I can walk three blocks this way, two blocks that way, and get to the same point as if I went diagonally across the field. So we're gonna be using those vectors. So we're gonna be adding and subtracting vectors. We are gonna go back and forth between coordinate systems. And we are gonna define position. Position is a location. Displacement is a change, and we're going to use this symbol for change. We're going to use that as a change in position. So displacement is a change in position. Position is a location. But distance traveled may or may not be displacement. Although when we were playing those games with the third, third grade word problems, Joey moved three meters per second for three seconds. Oh, uh, you know, if he did three meters per second for three seconds, well, he traveled three nine meters. Well, he may have had a total distance traveled of nine meters, but his displacement might have been zero. So a way to think about that is this. Let's say I'm in a swimming pool. And this is 50 meters long. Let me get it down here so people can see. I'm in a swimming pool, it's 50 meters long. If my swimmer swims to one side and back, the distance traveled is 100 meters. My displacement which is equal to my change in position, which is where I finished. So we're gonna use S to mean position, I'm gonna, where I finished. Minus where I started. Since those are the same, that's equal to zero. Now, what gets confusing over the next couple of chapters as we start going through these first three chapters is that we use displacement and distance kind of interchangeably, but it does mean something totally different. It means something completely different when we're actually thinking of it in terms of a physical quantity. So you want to make sure that you've got that kind of a definition. So for those of you where this is familiar, we're gonna be using our coordinate systems. We're gonna be looking at displacement. And tomorrow, we're gonna to start talking a little bit about our kinematic equations and get our kinematic equations going. So I'm gonna stop there because I'm pretty sure brains are full. And I'll open it up for questions.